before I can tow this trailer anywhere, I have to mount it. This is my Honda Fit, and I need a trailer hitch. So I got this thing. This is the Kurt, uh, what is the part number for it? One, one, oh, six, four. And uh, I bolt onto the underside of the body, but it doesn't have, like the frame rails don't have a threaded hole that's sort of prepared to receive something like this. It has holes, um, but there's a lot of uh, screwing around and fish wires and uh, sort of these mounting plates that you have to put inside, and then you the bolts attach to that. So um, it's going to be a lot of monkeying around. Uh, but uh, it says it installs in 45 minutes. I like to work slowly and I think they're talking about 45 minutes to somebody who's a professional and does this uh, for a living. So, have a look at these foam pads. They've got numbers and letters pressed into them from the original installation location of the uh, spare tire. So the spare tire and this floor have not moved an inch since this was new. The other thing I gotta do is wiring. So I got another Kurt part. This is a 56011 and it's a wiring harness. So this just plugs into the existing lights and then the car wires plug back into these plugs. It's sort of a plug that faces two ways. And then it just steals power from the existing lights and uh, has a little uh, controller box as well. So what a neat, what a neat clean way of doing it. My dad's been towing trailers for ever and uh, I've seen him wire trailers in and it's always electrical tape and finding splicing and screwing around. Okay, so having a look at the parts that we have with this kit, we got two fish wires. You probably only need one, but you know, you might break or lose one of them, so that's I'm glad there's two. Two carriage bolts, two nuts to go with them, two sort of like regular bolts, two washers to go with them. Uh, those two bolts go into these nifty little things. So I've, they come like this, just flat and smooth. And then they say you have to do a modification. So I'll show you that, that's right there. Handle nut modification, bend it. So it looks like that. So what you do is, I, you could do this by hand, I suppose, because it's not really hard metal, but it's, uh, I like doing nice clean bends. So I use pliers. And uh, you're inserting this into this little box that's built into the floor of the trunk. Um, that has holes that are the right size, so then you stuff this thing in through a gap in the side, and then the side of it rests high up in this, that's why you have to bend it up high like that, and then this gives you basically a handle to hold it while you tighten it, and then that handle will always be exposed, which is fine. I, I suppose you could cut it off, but then this is also going to help you take the thing off someday if you wanted to, if you didn't want to cut the bolt head off and then have some rattly bit of metal inside your uh, trunk pan. That would suck. All of this remains outside the car, which is good too. I thought um, I was going to have to drill a hole into my trunk bed, which I don't. Okay, we're going to start with step one in the instructions, which is putting the uh, fish wire, uh, the, ha the sort of half-inch carriage bolt, through the bottom with that one and a half-inch spacer uh, into this elongated access hole in the bumper beam mount on the uh, passenger side. So, here we are. I got the fish wire attached to the bolt. I love these things. That is a neat idea. And what you do is put the other end of the fish wire through this metal plate. So I want this to be oriented like that, according to the picture. So, put my fish wire through. When it's done, up inside the car, it's going to look like this. But i got to put the parts in one at a time. So, carriage bolt goes in. Then this metal plate goes in. And booyah! Step two is mounting these bent little handle nut things and sticking them in the hole. So, this is easily done. Bunk! And they line up nice. Uh, I might want to bend that slightly to make sure that the handle's quite out of the way when it's all tightened. So I'll put the other one in. Get in there, buddy. There. Boom. Step three says to raise the hitch into place. I'm using a uh, floor jack 
that I stole out of my original car, 1981 Tercel. What a beauty. So I've put this uh, in place with the two handle things. See those in there, and just hand tightened the nuts onto them. And then way over here, I've got my sort of fish wire solution holding onto that wire. Here's some advice don't pull hard on that. Once you've got it in place, uh, I've got that thing now half off the fish wire, I mean. And if I lose that nut up into that cavity, I am in trouble. Um, so, anyway, just be careful. So I'm holding this in place so that I can mark where I need, where is it, where I need to drill the hole on this side. And uh, that's going to be done once I am confident that I've centered this thing under the car. So uh, once I'm sure, there's no marking for where it should be, and there's tremendous amounts of slack. I can move this thing around until you actually crank it down. It can shift left to right quite a bit. So once I'm satisfied that I have it where I want it, I'll mark a hole, start drilling and grinding, and then fish wire up the other um, carriage bolt and uh, mounting plate. Gonna need a pretty short pencil, unless you wanna take this piece of trim off here. I don't know how to do it. Inherent in the fact that I don't want to take off that body panel, this plastic chunk here, I'm not going to be able to use a drill to make this hole. I mean, I could just make two holes uh, that were big enough, like a big enough drill bit, and then grind away the metal between them. But if I don't want to take that panel off, I can't use my drill. What can I use? Well, this. It's like a Dremel. It's a spin saw, and it has this nifty attachment on it with a little cutting wheel. So. Uh, I don't expect these cutting wheels to be particularly strong, and I have at least a half a dozen of them. So we're going to start by just trying to cut the hole away with this magic wand. And, you know, even if it's a square hole, I can grind it to make sure that I've got a nice smooth uh, edge once I'm done. Okay, so you can see my hole behind me there. Um, I couldn't use the, um, the spin saw, it just didn't have the horsepower, so then I had to switch and use this fella. Nice uh, pneumatic die grinder, did a beautiful job. Um, the hole now is just basically an elongated half inch, which means I can't get the um, the head of the carriage bolt through there. The instructions say the next step is to reverse fish wire the carriage bolt, but I can't really do that. What I can do is forward fish wire it so you can see where the bolt is and the wire's coming up where I want it to. I just happen to have this uh, channel available to me. So, uh, what I need is this fella and it's gotta go up with the wire going through it and up into the hole. The hole is just wide enough for this guy. Get up there, buddy. Ding! Now, just pull my wire. Go fishing. There it goes. And there it is. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, again, that little plastic panel kind of screws me because it's a little tough to get at this one. This is the driver's side uh, forward mount. So these guys are snapped to get at, obviously. Those handle things weren't a big problem. Here's the passenger side one, and uh, this one's just pointing straight down with nothing in the way. So uh, that was a snap to get at. Anyway, we uh, crank these on to 110 pounds of torque. I can get my uh, jack out of the way because obviously it's not holding up anymore and uh, we're done. Very nice.